mopeds were popular in the 70s because there was a gas crisis going on. 30-something years later, they're coming into vogue again, but for different reasons. Mopeds represent both independence and community. I know that sounds like a paradox, but it isn't. A moped rider has to be self-reliant. You don't take your vintage ride to a repair shop, you fix it yourself. This is a character-building machine, and they also represent community. The resurgence of moped interest has been powered by social networking, by community, by the internet. Owning a moped is cool, and anything that's cool will eventually define an aesthetic. For part one of my moped series, I'm heading over to Seattle Mopeds to talk with Seth Bedwell. Seth is an ambassador for all things moped. He's the president of the local moped club, and he defines the moped aesthetic. So what I wanted to talk to you today about is uh, is why mopeds. Why mopeds? Yeah. Um, Tell me the history. Tell me uh, what your interest in mopeds is. Sure. You know, it's a uh, it's it's something not everyone is gonna is gonna get or understand. Um, my my initial interest happened when I first moved to Seattle about four years ago. Um, I kind of came from the suburbs and and moved to Seattle and decided that I I didn't want a car in the city. Just too much of a hassle to try to park. Um, and get around town. So initially, I, uh, I I wanted to get a scooter, and then happened to see, um, just you know, before I bought one, I happened to see a few Mosquito Fleet members riding around on these these little scooter slash motorcycle slash um, bicycle looking things, and I didn't know what they were, but I was just immediately drawn to it. Um, and uh, through a little bit of research, I found the Moped Army, and then. Found Mosquito Fleet. All right, so tell me about Mosquito Fleet and the um, Moped Army. Yeah, Mosquito Fleet's been around for about six years now. Um, it's the only moped club here in Seattle. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've had over 100 members um, through our roster over the years. And, uh, yeah, it continues to grow all the time, and we see new people every single year. Um, so is, uh, is Moped Army, <coughs> like, sort of the the umbrella organization and then there's local clubs exactly yeah yeah moped army exists as a as a national organization um and and sort of an umbrella organization that all these different clubs across the united states um are a part of so where did that start exactly uh it started in kalamazoo michigan of all places um in uh, 1997 um between three guys um dan weber kastner um simon king and uh, Brennan Sang, who's no longer a part of it. Now, uh, Dan owns and uh, co-owns a bunch of moped shops. He does, right? yeah. Dan originally owned uh, 1977 mopeds in Kalamazoo, Michigan. From there, he branched out to uh, Warbucks Mopeds, uh, which he co-owns um, in Chicago, Illinois. And he recently opened a warehouse um, in San Francisco, which is basically the, the 1977 hub for shipping parts across the country. Right. And uh, most recent acquisition is Seattle Mopeds here. Right. So here is it kind of unique for a city to actually have a moped shop? It is, yeah. Um, there's only a handful of places across the country that actually have moped shops, and this is the only uh, moped-only shop in the entire Northwest. So th- this is kind of the go-to place. Right. Um, so what kind of bike do you ride? Uh, I have two bikes, actually. I've got a, I've got a 1977 Pook Maxi and a uh, 1978 Vespa Bravo. And is it pretty fair to say that all of these bikes are foreign and that the uh that they're most of them are kind of retro? Yeah, yeah. Um the majority are uh, are vintage bikes from the 70s. Um there's a few manufacturers that are still making them, Tomos being the most common. Is that from Slovakia? It is right. Slovakia, yeah. Um and Seattle Mopeds carries those and and a lot of the moped shops across the country carry those but the majority of us here in seattle are are still riding these vintage bikes from the 70s um and they all yeah most of them come out of europe there are a handful that were manufactured here in the states but they were still running um european engines on them right so what are the typical what are the typical brands basically from europe uh typical you'd see you'll see a lot of pooks you'll see a lot of socks 
Vespa is a is a common brand. Um, but yeah, those are probably the most the most typical that you'll see here in the states. Anything more popular than another one? Any any one that stands out as being the must have kind of uh, bike? You know, uh, <laughs> that's a point of contention among <laughs> moped riders across the country. Um, but Pook is generally um, kind of the standard that people go with. Um, it's it's easy to work on. It's extremely reliable. Um, parts are plentiful. Old parts are plentiful. Um, new parts to replace old parts that break are plentiful. Um, it's just an all-around really reliable moped. Anything I'm missing? Anything you're missing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think I, there's there's a certain aesthetic that goes with mopeds. Um, and like I said before, some people some people get it and some people don't get it. Um, some people don't understand why we ride around on these semi unreliable little 50 cc mopeds that only do about 30 miles an hour on the streets. Um, but uh, it, there's something about it when you when you get one and when you get on one. Um, I don't know. I, you know, not to sound cheesy at all, but my my life is definitely different since I started riding them. Um, and uh, you know, I've I've never seen a person get on one, ride around the block, and come out, come back without a without a big smile on their face. Right, and so. as you know, I'm a, a BMW motorcycle rider, and right. yet I still find time to be on my uh, Peugeot. Exactly, and it's a blast. Yeah, and we have a lot of people in the club that that ride motorcycles or scooters or whatever, and still come back to mopeds because there's something that's unique about them. Um, it's hard to put your your finger on it, but uh, yeah, there's something really enjoyable. It seems though that somehow uh, mopeds are marginalized by a lot of other riders of scooters or mo or uh, motorcycles. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? It happens a little bit. Um, you know, I I find a lot of motorcyclists and a lot of scooterists, especially people that are into uh, vintage bikes, be it motorcycles or scooters, um, really um, identify with the moped. You know, I'll I'll ride around on a Saturday afternoon and and have. Um, motorcyclists wave to me because they they get it you know my bike's smaller it's slower i'm never going to catch up with them but they understand why i'm out there and why i'm riding it um you know and, and they have they have a similar passion to mine i was uh riding to work on uh, the peugeot uh last summer and uh some guy pulled up next to me on a big bike and he was like man i haven't smelled that smell in years yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's something about those little two-stroke engines yeah absolutely yeah. 